With March Madness right here, you have seen some great clips with the best mascots in years past that are in the big dance. And we've talked to Reed Forgrave. We tried getting him on yesterday. He does have other duties. <laughs> that he does have to fulfill. That also sounded bad. But here we go. The March Madness Cinderella's. What are my personal favorites? I do want to hear all of yours, so leave those in the comments section below. And also do us a favor, subscribe to TYT Sports for more March Madness clips and sports clips. But we start with my personal list. So let's start with number five, and I'm actually going to go in order. Uh, the Rolling Stone, RollingStone.com certainly helped me out a little bit to jog my memory, but I did come up with a lot of these names because they provided the most entertainment and some of the best runs in March Madness history. So we start in 2008. The Davidson Wildcats, who put them on the map? No, it was not the coach Bob McKillop, uh, though he was a great coach, still is a great coach at Davidson. But it was the great services of Stephen Curry, who averaged 34 points per game. 34 points per game. Now, they went to the Elite Eight as a number 10 seed, and boy, he, he had some help. You know, with Lovejoy and Bryant Barr and whatnot. Bryant Barr, a fearless, fearless shooter. But Stephen Curry was the ultimate fearless, relentless shooter on this team. Not only averaging 34 points per game, but at times putting up 40, no, I don't know, 40, 34, 30 at times in this tournament run. They knocked off Gonzaga, the seventh seed. Uh, great coach in Mark Few and the Gonzaga Bulldogs, the Zags, uh, John Stockton. Zags, of course, John Stockton putting them on the map years past. But then they blew out Wisconsin. But before that, they beat a solid Georgetown team that had Jeremiah Rivers, Indiana boy, Austin Freeman. Of course, he was a transfer. Austin Freeman, Pat Ewing Jr., oh, another Indiana transfer, Roy Hibbert, Dewan Summers. These were NBA prospects, and Stephen Curry manhandled them. And then they go and beat Wisconsin after that, and then, of course, they lose to Kansas by two, where he shot an abysmal, I believe, 9 of 24. But it was one of the most entertaining runs of all time in March Madness. So we move right along. Uh, the 2013 Wichita State Shockers, of course, we know now in 2014 they are a number one seed in March Madness. But when they did compete last year, they were within minutes of knocking off the eventual champion, Louisville Cardinals. The Ron Baker, Fred Van Viet, Clee, Fred Van Vliet, Clee Anthony Early led Wichita State Shockers. And the one person that really put Wichita State on the map was their coach, Greg Marshall. As we all remember, they would go into the locker room, whether it was at halftime, pregame, whatnot. You would hear the quotes that he would put out, the way that he would motivate his players. It's not like... You know, Greg Marshall reminds me of Bo Ryan. Maybe uh, Bo Ryan is a little less wisdom-filled and he's more clear-cut. But they inherit these guys that were not five-star recruits. They bring them in and they have this fantastic run. Does Wichita State. A number nine seed, they beat the top seeds Gonzaga and Ohio State. They were up 12 against Louisville in the Final Four. And then, of course, Luke Han Hancock, Peyton Siva, and Russ Smith absolutely go off. There will always be a bullshit call in my eyes in that game, which was the quickest jump ball call I have ever seen in my life when Wichita State was down two, and unfortunately they would lose that game. Virginia Commonwealth University, with an enrollment of 34,000 plus students, was not a very well-known basketball school, not a powerhouse at all. Yet, when they inherited Shaka Smart, and he took a team with a 5'10 point guard and Joey Rodriguez, they were absolutely put on the map. Shaka Smart motivating his team and look, he has a great name and whatnot, but proving that the little guys can certainly fight and this was a great Cinderella story for, for uh, Virginia Commonwealth University. They were never ranked during the year. A number 11 seed, they obliterated USC. They crushed number six Georgetown. They beat the lowly Purdue Boilermakers. They survived Florida State. It was a very good team that year. And they beat number one Kansas. Virginia Commonwealth in 2011 was absolutely put on the map. They lost to Butler in the Final Four, but my oh my, what a run it was when they defeated Kansas, when they were up on Kansas, excuse me, by 14 points. Five tourney wins in school history before this tournament, and they won five that year. Joey Rodriguez, Jamie Skeen, Bradford Burgess. Fantastic stuff from a fantastic team and a true, true Cinderella. Now, in 2010, Horizon League winners Butler went 33-5. and They were undefeated in the Horizon Conference, so they were a good team. But they were always doubted because the Brad Stevens-led Bulldogs just didn't have the sort of oomph to put them into the Final Four. Yeah, they were an underdog. Yeah, they were doubted. 
But my, oh my, what a run they had. Now, the Final Four took place in Indianapolis. I went to Indiana University. I attended that Final Four. And the, the, the roaring applause that you heard when Butler came out through every possession, there was this, this electricity in the air for the Cinderella, the Butler Bulldogs, led by Matt Howard, Gordon Hayward, Ronald Norwad, Shelvin Mack. Some of these guys went to the NBA. Some of them did not fizzle out. Some of them fizzled out in the NBA. But my, oh, my, what a strong run it, it was. And not only that, some of these guys that were recruited, again, they were not the sharpest recruits. They were not the guys that you absolutely wanted on your team when they were coming out of high school, but Brad Stevens saw something. They saw Cinderella in this team. I mean, I, I will list off where they're from. Gordon Hayward, Brownsburg, Indiana. Matt Howard, Connersville, Indiana. Shelvin Mack, Shelvin Mack, Lexington, Kentucky. Ronald Norwood, Homewood, Alabama. A number five seed, they survived Murray State, the Isaiah Cannon-led Missouri State, uh, Missouri State team. They beat number one Syracuse, and that was really, that was really where they, they earned the respect. Because that was Andy Routens, Jim Beheim, Scoop Jardine, James Sutherland. I mean, what a team that was with Syracuse. And here's the, Bull, the Butler Bulldogs knocking them off on their run to a Final Four. And their record, by the way, for Syracuse, they won the Big East. They were 30-5. and five. And then they beat Xavier, who went to two overtimes against Kansas State in one of the best college basketball games I've ever seen. Duke Ouse, West Virginia. Meanwhile, Butler defeated Michigan State by two. And then just with seconds to go, John Shire and Duke would go on to beat the Cinderella story Butler Bulldogs because Gordon Hayward launching a three from half court hits off the backboard, hits off the front rim, and goes out. What a run it was for the Butler Bulldogs. Lastly, this is my favorite and obviously the most recent to all college basketball fans. It is Florida Gulf Coast University, a 15 seed that would go on to steal the hearts of whoever watched college basketball, whether you watched the entire season, just highlights or nuggets from last year's tournament. You know, Comer throwing up alley-oops, Sherwood Brown leading the way, popping his jersey after every single win, knocking off number two Georgetown, that uh, great coach and whatnot. But man, oh man, did they manhandle Georgetown. They rolled through San Diego State, the Steve Fisher-led Aztecs. And the way that they did it was with swagger. People said they didn't have class, but who the hell cared? When they were on the court, the, 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 the teams that also played in the same region that Florida Gulf Coast did fell in love with this team because they were so fearless. They were ambitious about the game. And most of all, they were having fun. This, this, this is their second year that they were eligible to even play in March Madness, eligible as a team. Overall, and here they are beating Georgetown, number two, beating San Diego State, number seven. And they did it with fucking swagger, man. Sherwood Brown, after they defeated Georgetown, I, I believe it was, he goes up to the scores table and shakes hands with Len Elmore as the clock winds down and Reggie Miller and Kevin Harlan. He goes up on the scores table. They were living in the moment and everyone absorbed it. And that's why sports are great and the Cinderella stories are great. The slipper didn't fit at the end of the day for Florida Gulf Coast. But that is by far, to me, the number one Cinderella story. But now I want to hear yours after that poetic justice. Leave a thought in the comments section below and also do me a favor, subscribe to TYT Sports.